Hi, if you're new, I'm Kylie, just another army vet. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm reacting to the soldier who fought in three armies. This is supposed to be a really good story about this soldier who fought for Finland, Germany, and the United States. So let's get to it. Lowry Torney, the soldier of three armies. It was October 18th, 1965. The outdated South Vietnam Air Force H-34 helicopter hugged tightly to the mountainous terrain of the Phuc San district of Vietnam. That is a monster helicopter. As the French and Americans had found, this reliable but old workhorse was not well suited for frontline combat see why. due to its slow speed and large silhouette. But maybe most significantly of all, its magnesium skin was prone to very intense and deadly fires if hit. Despite their best efforts, rescue teams could not locate the downed helicopter and its crew or the special forces soldiers on board. It was not until over 30 years later that the crash site of the helicopter was found. It was concluded that the helicopter had crashed into the side of a mountain while flying Nap of the Nap? Earth. Nap? What does that mean? Among the remains retrieved at the site was that of an American officer who was the team leader of the mission. He was Captain Larry Thorne, a U.S. military advisor who had also been in World War II, a commander in the German Waffen SS, and a Finnish Army First Lieutenant. He was a highly decorated soldier, and his awards included the German Iron Cross, second class, an American Legion of Merit medal, and the highest of Finnish awards, the Mannerheim Cross. Who was this man? Well, he wasn't originally an American, nor was his name Larry Thorne. In fact, his real name was Larry Torni, and he was born in Vipuri, Finland, on May 28, 1919. Just two years before his birth, the Russian Empire had collapsed, allowing Finland to emerge as a new independent nation. Lowry's hometown found itself on the very border with the Soviet Union, and over the next two decades, the Soviet Union became more and more interested in annexing Finland. In 1938, Lowry joined the Finnish 4th Independent Jaeger Infantry Battalion at the age of 19. This wasn't an ordinary unit. It was a CC unit who were experts at sabotage and guerrilla warfare, as well as long-range reconnaissance. They were often considered an elite unit. Sounds like special forces to me. And their job was to penetrate deep behind enemy lines, often gathering intelligence, operating from concealed positions. Sometimes they would carry out roadside ambushes, even being used to hunt down and destroy enemy special forces. He would soon need these skills. The Winter War. a year later in 1939, the Soviet Union carried out an unprovoked attack on Finland called the Winter War. I'm not exactly sure how this actually happened, but from my research, I think what happened was some sort of artillery round landed on Russian territory and no one could prove where it came from. Finland said it came from Russia and Russia said it came from Finland. So that's when Russia then decided to invade. Now, if someone from Finland or Russia wants to correct me on anything, just go for it. That's just what I've read at least. So if I'm wrong, please drop that in the comments. Fighting in the Finnish army. Lauri's battalion was based at Kiviniemi when the war started, tasked with protecting the strategically important leningrad kitola railroad line. Once it was realized that the Red Army was pouring over the Finnish Soviet border, Lauri's battalion redeployed and moved forward to defend the massive lake at Ladoga. The lake was the largest in Europe and had been shared by the Finnish and the Soviet Union since 1918 and had always been an area of high tension between the two nations. The Red Army attacked the area with overwhelming numbers, but they were ill-equipped, lacking adequate winter equipment. Their tanks were also still painted olive green and their infantry were still wearing brown coats as their camouflage winter clothing had yet to arrive. Lowry's battalion pushed back and surrounded a large number of Red Army troops at Lemeti on the northern part of the lake. Both Lowry's battalion and the winter weather in the form of frostbite inflicted huge casualties on the Red Army divisions encircled there. Lowry took command of the defense of Sugarloaf Hill, a hill that had to be held against the enemy forces in order to maintain Finnish reinforcements. The Finnish headquarters couldn't contact the defenders, so Lowry, using his skis, stealthily moved past the Soviet positions, re-establishing communications. Lowry then took command of a group of demoralized Swedish-speaking Finns, defending a key position, conveying orders through gestures, shouting, and punches, because he didn't speak Swedish. Lowry's courageous performance during this engagement came to the attention of his commanding officers, and he was promoted to second lieutenant. 
but it was ultimately to no avail for it was a short and bloody war, lasting just over a hundred days. In the end, Finland was forced to concede 11% of its territory, but it was a hollow victory for the Soviet Union. They were thrown out of the League of Nations, their casualties had been truly staggering, and many, including Adolf Hitler, now viewed the Soviet armed forces as a weak and ineffective force. In June 1941, Lowry went to train with the Waffen SS in Austria for seven weeks to gain further specialist skills, as by now Nazi Germany was a strong ally of Finland. During training, he wore a Waffen SS uniform and was given the rank of Untersturmführer, or Junior Storm Leader. Ignorant of the political implications, his swearing of the oath of loyalty even after death would later haunt him in the years to come. So yes, politically that looks pretty bad. Whether or not he was aware of what was going on with the Nazis in the concentration camps, I don't know. Much to Lowry's distress, his hometown was now on the Soviet side of the border, as was the whole Lake Ladoga region he had fought so hard to protect. Even his barracks at Kiviniemi were all now in Soviet hands. On June 22, 1941, the Germans launched Operation Barbarossa, the surprise attack on the Soviet Union. Three days later, the Finnish attacked too in what became known as the Continuation War. Lowry was back in Finland, put in charge of an armored unit consisting of captured Soviet tanks and armored cars. Finland would not take part in Germany's road to conquest, only advancing as far as its previous territories lost during the Winter War. On March 23, 1942, Lowry was skiing behind enemy lines when he skied over a friendly shrapnel mine while trying to capture enemy prisoners. He was hospitalized but eventually recovered, and instead of going on home leave, he went AWOL back to the front. Back in World War II, if you got injured and had too long of a time in the hospital, then you could get sent to a different unit once you were healed. So you would have lots of stories of soldiers going AWOL just to rejoin their battle buddies. By this time, the conflict had fallen into static trench-style warfare, and Lowry's unit was tasked with counter-guerrilla and counter-reconnaissance against Soviet special units that were behind enemy lines. Later, they would move into aggressive actions as they infiltrated behind Soviet lines themselves, taking on Red Army headquarters and communication sites. Lowry impressed his superiors, and in January 1943, he was given the chance by his senior officers to take command of a deep strike infantry unit that later became known as Detachment a unit 20, named after him. With the promise that of better awesome. rations and more active combat during what had become trench warfare, he received countless keen volunteers. With a strict criteria for aggressiveness, physical stamina, and good marksmanship, he rejected those that were unfit and picked the best men. They would take part in sabotage, capturing prisoners, and intelligence gathering behind Soviet lines. In one mission, Lowry's unit used rowing boats to get into place. They ambushed a Soviet truck and obtained a bag of intel. Then when a second truck came out of nowhere, moved into close combat using Puko knives and Puko axes. knife? More what is that? More troops reinforced the position, and Lowry's raiders escaped into the forest, stealthily sneaking past Soviet patrols, eventually making it back to the boats. Lowry had made sure that every man knew the enemy intel, in case only one of them made it out alive. The unit would succeed in several hit-and-run skirmishes, operating from a base camp that was deep in Soviet territory. They also learned to use the enemy weapons, which created confusion during engagements and made ammo plentiful as they were operating deep in Red Army territory. So there was a U.S. Special Forces unit operating in Vietnam that would do the same thing. I don't remember their name, though. They would take the enemy's weapons and create confusion on the battlefield by using them. Lowry and his men soon gained a formidable reputation for bravery and mayhem, to the extent that the Soviets put a bounty of three million Finnish marks on his head as they feared him so much. By June 1944, the war was all but lost for the Finnish. Despite victory after victory against the Soviet Union, they were simply too outnumbered. For his outstanding bravery and leadership during the battle, Lowry was awarded the Mannerheim Cross on July 9, 1944. In September 1944, the Finnish brokered the best deal it could with the Soviet Union, and in effect, the war ended. Most of the Finnish army was demobilizing, including Lowry, who was by now a captain. So, by November 1944, Lowry found himself a civilian, unemployed, and his country forced into a humiliating armistice. Once again, they had to concede territory and pay the Soviet Union reparation. As well as this, key members of the Finnish war were put on trial. Fighting in the German Army Lowry What is the relationship between Finland and Russia now? I would love to know. 
Finnish resistance who formed in the event that the Soviets tried to completely occupy Finland. He went to Germany for training in early 1945 with the intention of returning to train the resistance, but ended up joining the German army. He had secretly boarded a U-boat and had taken the alias of Lowry Lane to hide the fact that he was involving himself with the Germans. During his training, the German front in the east collapsed and the Red Army were on the borders of Germany. With no ships left, Lowry couldn't return to Finland, so he figured he could fight the Soviets by joining a ragtag band of Germans and was given the rank of a captain. Lowry used the same tactics that he had used so successfully against the Soviets in Finland. He was also joined by a fellow Finn, an officer named Somu Korpela. Soon he had gained a reputation for bravery and his men loyally followed him, even though his grasp of the German language was poor. By March 1945, the German army was defeated. Lowry and his men were fighting for their lives and decided to head west while they still could. This was to avoid the terrible fate of falling into the hands of the Red Army. That was probably the smartest thing he could have done. He was better off being handed over to the British. After VE Day, Lowry and his men found themselves behind German lines. Once again, Lowry performed a remarkable feat. He led his unit into Western Germany and he surrendered with his men to the British Smart. at Lebec. By doing so, the Finn had saved himself and the men of his unit from years of captivity in Siberia. Lowry ended up being put in a prisoner of war camp in Lübeck, Germany. He feared that he would be turned over to the Soviets because of his role in the continuation war, or they would discover his involvement in the Waffen-SS. A few months later, in June 1945, he escaped the camp with Somul Korpela and made his way back to Finland. He was arrested, this time by the Finnish state police, but shortly escaped from them too. Lowry was then arrested again in June 1946 and tried for treason for joining the German army when Finland had signed a peace treaty what? with the Soviets. He was sentenced to six years in prison. During his time in prison, he had made several escape attempts, which all ended in failure. His last one used a grappling hook made from bed sheets and scrap from the metal shop. He was finally pardoned by the Finnish president in December 1948 and released. Unhappy and disillusioned, Lowry went to Sweden in 1949 under the false name of Elino Morsky. He ended up in Venezuela and in 1950 found work on a Swedish cargo ship, the MS Skagen. A few months later, when it was off the coast of Alabama, he jumped ship and swam ashore. Of course ashore. he did. He was reduced to doing carpentry and cleaning jobs and in 1953, he was granted a residence visa. Fighting in the U.S. Army. In 1954, at the age of 35, he joined the U.S. Army, adopting the name Larry Thorne. Even though he was a recruit, his experience stood out vastly compared to the other men. His natural leadership abilities gained him rapid promotion, and he was made a first lieutenant in 1957 and then a captain in wow. 1960. He had been stationed in West Germany from 1958 to 1962. During this time, he got in trouble when he got into a bar fight. A fellow Finnish officer pulled some strings and he got Larry transferred to the 10th Special Forces Group. He was able to use his experience to teach skiing, survival, mountaineering, and guerrilla tactics, and learned new skills himself in airborne school. In January 1962, Larry was sent to the Zagros Mountains of Iran in command of his team, where he successfully completed his mission to destroy the top secret material on a crashed U.S. plane. Then in 1963, he was sent to South Vietnam to assist in the formation of local CIDG units. In one particular vicious firefight at Tien Bien near the Cambodian border, he was awarded two Purple Hearts and a Bronze Star wow. for bravery. The Viet Cong attacked his base in force and breached the outer perimeter, almost overrunning the area. If it wasn't for his determination, the base would have been lost. It is said that in Robin Moore's book, The Green Berets, Captain Steve Corney is based on Larry Thorne. When he returned to the United States, instead of retiring to a desk go back? job, Larry volunteered for a second tour of duty. During his second tour of duty on October 18, 1965, Larry was put in command of a top secret special forces unit called MACV SOG. Trying that is the unit I was just talking about a few minutes ago, the ones that were using the enemy's weapons to create confusion. This was the kind of unit that was so secretive that they pretty much would have done anything not to get captured, because they would never make it out of captivity alive. It would be a gruesome death. ...to locate Viet Cong turnaround points along the Ho Chi Minh Trail. 
when his helicopter crashed in the mountains and he was killed. His remains went undiscovered for over 30 years. Lowry earned the Distinguished Flying Cross and was promoted to Major posthumously. His name is honored on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., and in 2003, his remains were brought back to America. He was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. Wow, what a legacy. And yes, he did wear a German SS uniform, but I don't think it was for the love of the Nazis. I think it was just for the hatred of the USSR and Russia. If they tried to make a movie out of this guy's story, I don't think the audience would believe half of it. It's the same thing that happened with the hero of Hacksaw Ridge, that medic who won the Medal of Honor. They had to actually tone down his story for the movie because what he did was just too unbelievable. They knew the audience would have a hard time actually believing it. So this man was the definition of resilience. And he's the kind of guy that you would want to have on your side. Until next time, here are a few videos on the screen you might want to check out. And thank you for watching.